Hello and welcome to Legacy K. A uh, little bit of some backlog that I'm working through. I'm happy to cast some Infect, which we almost never have. Um, in fact, over here on the left, and uh, VJ piloting. Oh, Mountain. All right. Well, we've got a 100% success rate on identifying that deck. And if you're on the play with Burn and you reveal a Trop Island before your opponent has played anything, um, I'm thinking Rug Delver or Infect. Um, Trop is a three of in some other buggy decks, like Aluren and stuff. Um, depending on his turn one play, I think he'll be able to peg exactly where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> well then. All right, so both players fully aware of what's going on in this matchup now. And I got to say, from the burn side, I, I feel a little uncomfortable. I don't know how many creatures I'm supposed to kill. Oh, wait. I know the answer to that. Uh, all of them. I, I don't know. This seems a little tough. Um, maybe a burn player or an infect player or both can chime in here and tell me um, how this matchup really goes. I totally understand the desire to just both try to turn three each other. Um, but I think that infect on average has a faster kill. And by the way, a lot of the fastest kills revolve around a turn one Glister Elf. And I'm completely okay with um, always blocking the Glistener Elf when we start deploying creatures. Um, a fast burn hand will kill almost every deck in the format, even through Force of Wills and Fluster Storms and Dazes and stuff, given enough time. Um, so I think this really depends on the quality of the Infect player's hand um, and how fast he's able to actually go. If this is a chip shot for one and no other plays, um, then I would consider just killing this Glistener Elf um, on this next turn so that he doesn't line up a, a big Invigorate. Um, setting the Infect deck back by killing its creatures basically requires that they spend the next turn deploying another one if they even have it. And the deck only has 12, so... In the sideboard, I think Burn also has a lot of ways to deal with um, artifacts, which four of the creatures are. Ensnaring Bridge, funny enough, is not very effective against a deck attacking with 1-1s one and then pumping them. So that's cute. And Kevin, actually, he's digging super deep here, which appears to me like he might be able to line up a uh, turn two. Like if he's holding... If he's holding one Invigorate and he's searching for a Berserk or um, the other way around, I can definitely see blowing both uh, both pump of, or both pump or Brainstorms and attempting to end the game right now. And we're going to go to one Infect, and he should be at seven cards to pass the turn. Um, here, I can assume that he's holding... Maybe a defensive invigorate, um, which isn't really where we want to be, but I mean, it eats a card out of our opponent's hand and we continue attacking. So, I mean, an infect player will do what they got to do and see if he lined up a land on top for probably a windswept teeth. I didn't catch all of that. So, we brainstormed and definitely put land on top. And now we'll see if he's able to fight against. Okay. All right, so is Kevin already down to 10? How does... Yeah, I mean, Goblin Guide makes fast work here. So without a... He's, he's half dead, and there's no creature on the table, so... He's going to have to deploy... Maybe Blighted Agent this turn and kill next turn? And there's Inky. Um... Inky is quite mana intensive here. He costs one to activate. He himself. Okay. Oh, this will be Blighted Agent. Okay, so that's a that's a very very. Um, I don't know, intimidating. Yeah, intimidating from Huijay's side. Who, if he's drawn four mountains over this game, I think that his hand is pretty bad. 
turns probe on top, and Kevin is thinking about possibly blocking with the Noble Hierarch, which makes a lot of sense if he's already got the kill in hand. Yeah, so he wants to stay above 8. With two cards, three cards left in the burn player's hand, um, I can understand the decision here where he feels like he may actually just die. Let's see if Ink Moth goes for it here. Gitaxian Probe is probably a card to come out, by the way, but um, it's possible to just cycle it for a blue here. Um, that makes it basically impossible to attack with the Ink Moth this turn, though. So, Kujay has shown willingness to always point burn um, directly at the creatures while outside of combat. Um, and basically protecting himself from getting blown out by pump effects. So he announces the attack for two, and it's just two. Interesting. This... I wonder what those brainstorms found. We... <laughs> apparently it was more creatures. There's an invigorate on top. And... He will give that a look-see. So he's at two. Ink Moth will come in for what looks like a, at least a guaranteed six next turn. And if that was the second piece of pump that he was missing, um, then PJ has to feel really threatened here because that means that his first piece of removal um, going at the Ink Moth is invalidated by a held Invigorate. And if there's a second piece of pump, then that protects the first. And now I'm starting to think become immense is, is a big deal here. So the attack is declared, and Kevin's going to pull the trigger here because he's low on health. Nice guy that he is. He will put his opponent to 23. And now the Blink Moth, or the Ink Moth is a 5 5. So um, no damage based effect is going to kill it. Uh, this means to me that he is completely shields down. And if you. If there's pump here, then we have to spend it. It's going to seven. Um, we're free to find. We're free to find forest here, and then so, um, have to feel like this is a vines or a become immense. If it was an Invigorate, the game would already be over. I think he's going to kick a Vines. And that'll be game. Because Huijay uh, has shown that he, he cannot kill the thing based on damage. And I don't think that there's seven left in his hand. That fetch was a little risky, though. Um, you could see Kevin's hesitance. But it doesn't get any better for you at that point. You know that Burn is going to continue to draw uh, three damage spells off the top of their deck. If you wait another turn, you're probably dead. Swift Spear gets in for one on turn one. And we'll see if Kevin has a, a Glistener Elf hand. I kind of categorize... Yep. I categorize different infect hands by the creature that they're relying on. And the most explosive turn... Like, the turn two possibility requires a Glistener Elf. Um, a turn three with, like, less opportunity to get screwed on the ground is... All right, Burn Player playing around days correctly. Uh, a, a hand with, like, Blighted Agent that isn't going to get roadblocked on the ground is much more stable. And we'll see if he has another creature to deploy here. Even if you get set back like this, like losing your turn one Glistener Elf, um, oftentimes the Infect player doesn't think that the Glistener Elf is the end of the game. Like, that's not what's going to finish it for us. <laughs> Maybe it'll be the second Glistener Elf. Or, honestly, much more likely is uh, 
the turn three blighted agent that gets in for what it needs. Whatever is remaining. No blocks. See what happens. He's going to say no prowess. And I'm interested to know what, what his hand is. It appears to be... It appears to be all reactive spells of some sort. Maybe he's holding, like, some sideboard cards. He's, like, holding Pyroblast, things like that. Um, Glistener Elf is now um, sped up to a five-turn you know, five clock with the addition of a Pendlehaven. And Pendlehaven and Noble Hierarch both have the same effect on this, um, making the count from... 10 much easier or count from 1 to 10 much easier um, because as soon as we start using berserks we, we really need to start at 2 so he's going to get the chip shot damage for 1 so, ugh, possibly just triple glistener elf hand this also allows him to spread pump out between multiple creatures and our burn opponent doesn't really seem to be doing very much. Spike you. 13. Attack for 2. Okay. Yeah, he's going to block and Pendlehaven this dude. See if he gets taken out here. This is going to require a burn spell. And he's obviously thrown for a little bit of a loop here. He didn't process the Pendlehaven quite correctly when it hit the field. Um, this is going to change his math, and he's, he's wondering, can I actually win without this Swift Spear, like, with this punt here? Or do I have to devote another card to this? I think the likelihood of like a bolt killing that Glistener Elf, very high. What is that? What is... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter, but what is that? Ends turn and the prowess effect wears off, so he's taken two poison or two minus one minus one trigger or uh, counters on the swift spear, so it dies at the end of turn. And now, I I feel like I've labeled this burn, but there's some different stuff going on here, which possibly um, explains some of like what felt clunky about the early game of both of these games. Um, Maybe there's a bunch of cards in Huijie's hand that aren't really matching up here um, and are apparently not burn regular all-stars that we expect to see. Hiya. Uh, yeah. Representing three. He announces no more. In fact, goes to four. And this looks like a pass to me. Play some card that I don't know again. And never mind. Kind of a land. Doesn't count. It's down to eight. If he doesn't want to draw this crop rotation, which I don't think we do, it's going to have to go to seven. I think we have to grab Forest. He really doesn't want to draw that crop rotation, so he's he's can he afford the trop? 
It's got one card in hand. If you can close this game out this turn, I think that the, you're okay grabbing the trap. But if there's any question, we can function off of one blue, so... So many cards in hand. Boom. So this is really interesting here because I can't I can't agree with this. We're spreading our targets out, which is great, except that he already allowed Pendlehaven to resolve on the thing. So anything but the fire blast is going to be able to is not going to be able to kill the first one. So why are we pumping the second one who didn't have the initial amount of defense? And he's dazing into open mana. So this is a Fluster Storm, 100%. He tapped, tapped Tropical Island for a blue, generate more storm, Fluster Storm, Fire Blast, that's game. Well played. I like it a lot. Um, made this matchup look pretty good, but again, I don't know the full deck list here. I think that there's some spicy stuff going on we didn't see. Good game, bye.